Hi, uh, a very good afternoon, everyone, and I welcome you all to this session on a conversation with Betso alumni. It is indeed a great pleasure for us to be collaborating with uh, Betso Alumni Network on such a platform where we will get to hear from our alumni about their life, after Betso, their careers, and so much more. I can also see that uh, besides our panel, we have other alumni joining us today for this meet. So glad to see you all after such a long time and a warm welcome to all of you. Our alumni have established themselves as successful individuals in different fields, and we could not be any prouder. Yes, the progress of an institute uh, depends not only on the administration and the teaching staff, but also on the achievements and the developments of its students. And we are extremely happy and proud that our alumni are an important part of Betso family. And it is your success stories that contributes to the progress of our institute. So uh, last but not the least, I would like to thank all of you for your deep participation, as well as the support you have always given to your alma mater. Uh, with that, I welcome you all once again, and I hope that this meet will help you all to reconnect with your institute, uh, help you reconnect with your teachers and your classmates. Now, without uh, taking up much time, I would like to hand over the time to um, Annie King, who will be the moderator for this session. So, Annie King, please take your time. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Annie King and I'll be the moderator for this session. So before we begin, let me first introduce uh, our alumni panel. We have with us Mr. Albert S. class of 2018, and he is the finance secretary of the Alumni Network. Ms. Malevin Yokira, class of 2014, she is the general secretary of the Alumni Network. And Mr. Masevel, the two class of 2015, and he is the president of the Alumni Network. So before I get into the questions, I would like to give them the opportunity to briefly introduce themselves and let us know what they are currently up to. So we will start with Mr. Albert, followed by Melvinio and Mr. Masivel. You may take the time. Uh, good evening, everyone. First of all, I give thanks to God at the same time, the Department of History for giving me a privilege, okay? And well, my name is Albert and I'm the founder and the director of Clef North Music Academy. Currently, again, I'm serving as a finance secretary in Tetsu Alumni Association and I'm working as, uh, I'm serving as a president in our youth department at Kipu Bar. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Malivun Yokera. And also currently I'm serving as the General Secretary of Tetsu Alumni Association. And uh, com currently I'm holding the position of headmistress in Newton Chapel Public School, Tamil Nadu. And also, uh, yeah, thank you so much to the Department of uh, History. And first of all, I want to say sorry, also I want to apologize because my network is not so good. So I cannot hear your voice properly also, but hope things will go really well. Anyway, thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Mashivil Tu. I did my graduation from Tetso uh, in batch of 2015. Then I went for higher education uh, for my master's PG in Nalini, at Nalin University, Lumami. And as soon as I completed my PG, I started teaching in uh, Greenwood School, Kuta. And, um, I am presently a uh, President of Tetsu Alumni Association, and uh, also actively engaging myself in student activities and social activities, uh, doing my best to give out to the society and using my platform uh, in schools and in uh, whichever way I can with my able capability, I'm uh, very much into giving out to the society. Thank you, and I also, uh, I'd like to thank the history department, Ma'am Tatong, and our moderator. Thank you. Thank you all for introducing yourselves to us. So to begin with the questions, um, the first question is for MERS. Uh, how does taking up for MERS help prepare you for a career in opening a music academy? And what inspired you to do this? 
Okay, thank you for the question. I hope now you can hear me, right? Yeah, I hope everyone here. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, because of poor network. Uh, actually, <clears throat> to set up the music academy, it was my plan from my high school stage only. And so I take up the commerce because I expect that through commerce, it will help me to grow my academy at the same time to fulfill my dream. So I take up as a commerce and it really helped me at the same time, <clears throat> not only by taking up the commerce, but it really helped me by our uh, lectures and all. They are so humble at the same time, they are so friendly. They really helped me and especially the Sir Rajesh and the Miss Henny and all. They really encourage me at the same time, they always support me. Not only them, but majority of our lectures always support me. So. I take up as a commerce and commerce helped me a lot to grow my business. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This question is from Malavenyo. How did you let up in public school in Tamil Nadu and how was your journey up to become the happy students of the school? Can you please share some of your experiences and what motivated you to work outside the Nadu education? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your question. Well, right after my graduation, I was uh, quite confused with my career. And then I was getting a lot of pressure from my parents, also from my cousins and relatives. It was my passion to become a teacher, but uh, some of my cousins, uh, you know, like disappointed me a lot. And they were saying like, no, the teacher's salary are not good. And if you don't have BA degree, how comes you are going to end up to become a teacher. So by 2015, I took a BA from um, Bosco College, Bosco College, Nagaland, Dimap uh, Dimapur, Nagaland. So after I finished my BA in 2016, uh, I wanted to join a CBAC school. It was almost always my dream to uh, join a CBAC school. So luckily, I got through the interview and I was working in Etanagar and Donya Polo Vidya Bhawan School. For three years, I was working as an assistant teacher. And in 2019, I got the opportunity to work as an academic coordinator in Tamil Nadu. So after working for one year, uh, my heads gave me the chance to work as a vice principal. But unfortunately, to become a, a vice principal, I have to reach 35 years of age and still I'm 28 years old. So um, they gave me the position as a headmistress and currently I'm working as a headmistress in uh, Newton Chapel Public School. And it's all uh, because of Tetsu, uh, what I am today. And I wanted to give thanks to all the princi uh, to my principal and to the director and also to VP and all uh, my lectures. Thank you. Uh, this question is for Marcevel. Um what and who inspired you to become a teacher? Please share some of your experience and your story with us. Uh, thank you, moderator. Um, when I was in my PG, doing my master's, I met a beautiful lady and uh, she's a good friend. We used to have a good conversation from time to time and she, uh, she told me saying that I can be, I mean, I should go in teaching line and choose that profession. But during that time, I did not uh, think of uh, uh, teaching as a profession. To the least, uh, what everybody feels before I think. And uh, after, right after I finished my PG, I came and then 2018, we all had this uh, general election, caught up little in this uh, I mean, I was little engaged and busy in this election. And then as soon as this uh, election was uh, uh, machine up, is, uh, uh, real, I had to do something. I cannot sit duck at home, uh, being unemployed. It was, uh, it was not a good feeling. So I decided to go and face interviews. And during that moment, it was in the month of uh, November, December. and. Uh, uh, what I was getting was uh, mostly uh, uh, job interviews in uh, teaching line. So I started going for these interviews and I had uh, two, three interviews in uh, some of the good schools as well as college. And I finally got uh, a, call, a call from Greenwood uh, principal saying that uh, I am selected. And in that, 
from the beginning of uh, 2019, I started my journey as a teaching. Um, at the very outset, when I started, it was uh, not as a choice, but uh, as I eventually, gradually started learning and teaching and experiencing myself as a teacher, it was uh, very exciting and fun. And uh, I realized that I can be in this field of uh, profession and then actually can do much. And when I was, uh, I had a lot of things to share and do for our society, but there was not a platform. But uh, teaching was a very good platform. In fact, one of the best platform we ever have to build up good citizens and uh, uh, students to build them and mold and shape all that comes around by being a teacher. So I started enjoying and I actually I'm loving this profession now. And I'm, I believe that uh, teaching profession is, of course, it's a very noble job, but uh, it can be a career for people who really want to have an impact and let our society grow in the right path. Uh, that is what I uh, started feeling and it's uh, almost three years now, I'm uh, going two years plus and soon I will, I don't know, but this may be my career going for another professional degrees to add up and maybe keeping this uh, or let's see the future holds, but this teaching profession is a very good and a noble one. I'm, Loving it, I'm enjoying it. Uh, thank you. Can you please tell us how did the so prepare you for your careers and how your life has been up so far after the so? Okay, before the other uh, others um, friends did, uh, before they take up, I'll just share a few words. Okay, what I have experienced in the so and what. That college have helped me. Okay, uh, college have provided with a full of like platform. Especially, uh, we have so many activities in the college. It helped me to come uh, build up my competent level. At the same time, to stand in front of the people, leading by the student council, and I was serving as a HES, the GS, and at the same time, I was working with the YI and so many activities. From here, I've learned so many things, and at the same time, to take up the responsibility I've learned from our college and. I think our college is one of the best college to provide a platform, all those things. Because uh, I compare to my friends, to other colleges, they are not providing like this kind of uh, activities. So our college has so many activities where it helps, especially for the entrepreneurs, in order to start up a business, we need to build up ourselves. So our college has really helped us to be an uh, entrepreneur as per my, <laughs> uh, my own learning. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh my journey in Tetso, um, I chose Tetso College and uh, it was a very good choice for me. My friends, uh, we were all planning to study together, but I did not follow them. Some were here and there, but uh, I wanted to be in Tetso. And that was a good thing I chose. Uh, um, while I was in Tetso, I was uh, a, bit, uh, a bit naughty and uh, more of a casual, uh, like we all do when we are in college days, we think less of the consequences and enjoying to the most. I was that I was that kind of student. I was not very good in academics. I was just uh, coping up. Just say I'm above average, at least I can say. <laughs> but uh, I was coping up with others and getting along with. Uh, co-curricular activities. I like uh, to participate in most of the events. If there is sports, I like football and the others. I will try to participate. Uh, literary contests or uh, thing, uh, contests are going on. I would like to be part of it and and also taking uh, classes, enjoying to the most. We had some of the best lectures and uh, assistant uh, lecture uh, professors. I got a lot of uh, knowledge and wisdom. Uh, I got from them, of course, knowledge, and uh, they were they, they were there for us. And I took the most of it. I benefited a lot. Of course, the administration, the uh, school authorities, they were there to always guide us and take the school, uh, I mean, the college and the students to the right direction. We were not directionless. 
most of the time we were guided. Of course, they need there are need for a strict control, which sometimes we tend to be rebellious. But uh, that was a good thing because uh, if not, I would have strayed from the path which I am not, uh, which I was, uh, I was going to be if not controlled. So that was a good thing, and uh, everything has uh, a good. Nobody builds a society for uh, bad things to happen, only for the good. And college exists for the good, uh, for the students community only, I realized. And I had the most, I had the most uh, fun and enjoyment and, and my academics, I graduated, I learned a lot. And then I persuaded for my uh, higher education, of course, uh, PG in Lumami. And then all the things which I have uh, accumulated and taken the opportunities in learning this uh, English proficiency class, um, refining myself in the communication and uh, whatever motor skills and aptitudes I have uh, received and the learning I have received, I was able to execute in my uh, PGs and ultimately what I have incul imbibed and inculcated uh, those led me to uh, to who I am today, and uh, it's because of uh, the college, my uh, whole uh, learning process, and till now, I am enjoying a lot. And because of all this, and then now, as uh, being part of this uh, Tetsu Alumni Network, it's a great platform, another way we can inspire, encourage, connect, contribute together. When we were students, we enjoyed a lot too. Now we are going to be much more bigger than some uh, that, than before, and being part of this uh, alumni and being part of this uh, uh, team network, I believe we are going to be seeing some of the uh, notable students or alumni of TEDSOS, and uh, soon we will be interacting with each and every one of uh, uh, the notables, especially the alumni who are. are across the country as well as the uh, abroad, other countries, and who are successful, like we have uh, our Albert entrepreneur, we have our acad academician, uh, Ale, and they are people. So Tetsu College has been a great platform for us, and now we are going to utilize this uh, alumni platform, this alumni network, to reach out to our alumni, because uh, I believe many are productive, uh, being dependent, uh, I mean, independent and reaching out to the society and in their own capable and able uh, uh, shoulder doing things. So I'm very excited and uh, looking forward as a family of that. So, and also now in the uh, alumni network. Thank you. What memories did you take away from that? So, and also the challenges uh, you face as a student here at the so college and even after you graduate? Okay, I'll be the first one to respond this. All right, so uh, college life poses a lot of challenges in front of you, as everyone knows. So uh, you are now in a place full of unfamiliar faces where you need to mingle in. So um, Tetsu College teaches me to socialize and form opinions of my own. In college, uh, students... You know, like uh, learn their free will and they go on to become more confident and composed. Whereas uh, in my school life, uh, I was always dependent on my teachers and my friends and also my parents. But after getting into a college life, it teaches me to be independent. So it makes me stronger and it teach me to fight my own battles. And I also uh, make a very serious uh, about my careers, and then I make decisions that will affect my future all by myself, as in school life, our parents did for me. But uh, after joining Tetsu, I should say, like, I became very confident, as well as I was able to make my own choice. I was able to decide on my own. Thank you. Hey, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is David. And I was supposed to be part of 2013 batch, but I dropped out in 2012. Uh, I gave an interview through consultancy and moved to Bangalore in the working in BPO. But uh, just want to share a few things about the life in Tetsa College. 
that was in 2010 when I, uh, when my uncle took me to Tetsa College, I took admission there. And I was not born and raised in Nagaland. But after getting admission in Tetsa College, I was in hostel. I learned how to speak Nagamese and uh, the friends in hostel, they taught me their different dialects that they taught me about culture. The uh, lecturers who were staying in staff quarters, they were very supportive. I was in uh, commerce stream. So the lecturers there were like very supportive. They were, they like whenever I had any doubts, even in hostel, uh, the one of the lecturers, she used to uh, uh, give me a separate time <clears throat> to study well because uh, there were very few uh, students from commerce background during these, uh, those days. But overall, I learned many things apart from uh, uh, the personal, apart from the personal things. They, they taught me about like how, how, how the culture is there in Nagaland. And then I know like I'm not doing the best after the college life, but I still cherish the moments I spend in Tetsu College and seeing the progress right now, seeing all the activities happening around the infrastructure. I feel so proud. And whenever uh, friends ask here, like, where did you study? I, I can proudly say I, I studied from Tetsu College. Thank you. What are you doing to stay creatively active to grow in your chosen career? Uh, I would like to add a few points here. Uh, right now, I'm working as a business analyst in a uh, reputed IT company. It's a software company. And I see like not most of us uh, are in IT background. But in future, if I get a chance, uh, I would like encourage our fellows to grow in IT sector. Like there are many opportunities, not only in technical side, but in the uh, project management side. And they're like in sales. So there are many opportunities in the IT sector as well. So if I get opportunity, I would sure I would I would like to like I would stay connected in the alumni society and I will try to share as much as I can from my end. How is building connections and networks with people important, especially when you are planning or beginning to start your career? Let me repeat. How is building connections and networks with people important, especially when you are planning or beginning to start your career? Um, okay, I'll take the time. Yeah, supplementing to uh, what David has said, it's uh, always a fortunate to have uh, an IT in our own team and uh, working with uh, people like uh, you. So yes, uh, not in future, but soon we'll be needing your help. And you, since you are, we are an alumni of uh, that, so and we have a bigger dream and a desire to give out to the college, to the students community, and to our society in general. We need each one of us to uh, we, uh, to communicate and cooperate, and finally to do something for our betterment of our college and our society. And that is what we are supposed to do. Uh, we are part of this uh, college and being an alumni, we ought to give something. And that is what I expect from our alumni. Thank you, David. And uh, uh, moderator, uh, the question, um, yes, uh, having connectivity or uh, networking is the best in this uh, time of, 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 of uh, present 21st generation, uh, century. We need lots of connection. And to get a job, to do something, to accomplish something, or to uh, work out, talk out something, we need help. And uh, we all know that uh, connectivity, uh, having connection with one another is always a good thing. Uh, we cannot be strangers to one another all the time. We eventually have to communicate and start talking, and that is what we are trying to do as a alumni platform, uh, connecting with our alumni here and there. People are scattered everywhere. After we uh, we finished our we finish our graduation, we will all go back to our places and we pursue and we go uh, different different places. But the thing is that we need to come back together because we know that we are all 
a graduate and we are going to be productive on one or the other way. We are not going to be sitting dark at home and being useless. No, we are not going to do that. That is not a good, uh, a good citizen. That cannot happen. We need to be a responsible citizen. And we have people from different backgrounds. We have entrepreneurs, we have uh, teachers, we have academicians, we have ITs, we have uh, industrialists. We have people from different, different capable uh, about, uh, about uh, field in professions. So connecting with each other makes things a lot more easier. And that is what we, we the alumni platform, we, the alumni networks are trying, and we will be soon looking forward to uh, connect with our uh, alumni in a, a more concrete manner, which uh, we are on the set. We are commencing with uh, those uh, activities in the coming time. Um, those things will happen, and then I, I hope that our uh, alumni, whoever is connected now and uh, in future, if we are connected through uh, WhatsApp or uh, Facebook or Instagram, I hope that we can uh, continue to connect one, uh, keep in touch with one another so that we will make a bigger impact, share and give our ideas and uh, do out, talk out things together. That is our idea as uh, our alumni network is planning for. Definitely, the collaboration is very much required, and this platform, it's a like it's a very good thing that we have this platform. We can collaborate. We belong to different background, <clears throat> but um, this platform will help us to collaborate with each other, share their thoughts, and it will be helpful for our uh, new uh, new students in Tesla College as well. So, um, uh, proud to be part of this uh, society. Yeah. Uh... <clears throat> It, before we start our care or before we set up anything like connectivity, it's very important. At the same time, you know, like uh, since I was in the I was in the key free, I didn't know anything about the technology. At the same time, nothing about this true connectivity like Facebook or any like Instagram or anything. But uh, right after I joined that zone, our college provides so many connectivity in the ways of Instagram, in the ways of Twitter, so many things. There, I've also learned at the same time for me to set up our own business. Uh, I didn't take much time because I have seen so many practically in our college how the network connectivity plays important role in the business. So uh, during my second year, that is in the become fourth semester, I set up my own business that is Cleft Not Music Academy. And I also started with my own connectivity that is the Instagram pages. I open up and I can I uh, open the page of the Facebook. These are the things that I have learned so many things practically from our college, not only the book knowledge, but then to set up the business. These were the important tools that we need to use. And I take up all these things. That's why uh, for me, it takes really easy to, I mean, set up my own business and it plays a very important role. At the same time, I should say not only the business matter, but connectivity plays a very important role like our Tetsu alumni association. So many people are in different places, but through this connectivity, we are here as one family and at the same time to discuss the things, at the same time to share our ideas, to share our plans to our juniors at the same time uh, to meet as one family. So I should say the connectivity plays a very important role to build up or in order to set up our own life. Thank you. Most of the students are in dilemma as to what to pursue after graduation. So when you were at that stage, what did you do? Okay, let me take up the first. Okay, uh, I should say I'm being my own experience. Many of our NACA people, we take our plan too late. Okay, that's why we are in delay. At the same time, we are stuck where to go when we reach the final semester. So I would like to encourage to our brother and sister, please take your plan in at once. That also not in the one plan, but you should take up one or two plans so that one, if you step down, you can go up with another step. Likewise, for me, uh, for me, there was no dilemma for me because I've already planned from my uh, high school stage at the same time as soon as whatever I take up the plan, it was to achieve it. That's why uh, for me, when I reached first and second semester, my plan was already in the final stage. So at the same time, when I reached the second, I mean, second year, I've already established it and I can finally year I started working with my own business at the same time I was studying. So for me, as soon as I graduated also, there was no question where to go or what to do, but I have already planned. That's why now some of our seniors are working with me. Some of our brothers and sisters are with me. That's why I'm uh, here today. And I would like to like one thing, the main points is I would like to say 
take the plan in at once so that there will be no question what to do, where to go after your creation. Thank you. Calbert, I was also very clear that uh, once I finish, uh, uh, complete my graduation, I would also go for higher education. Um, but most cases, people are always in this uh, crossroad where they are confused. And yeah, like you said, they are in dilemma whether to pursue higher education or stop there or, or do something else or they feel uh, helpless. And sometimes they are even hopeless of themselves that uh, they can even go for higher education or they can go now do their find, uh, find jobs and do something out of themselves. Um, if, uh, as for me, I, like I said, I was very clear. I wanted to go for higher education. In fact, I applied for the central universities in Nehu and uh, NU here. And in both, uh, in NU there was, uh, uh, during that time there was a domestic uh, violence that uh, seats uh, uh, those uh, indigenous people were unable to get through and the outsiders are getting through. So those, uh, uh, when there was a recruitment in Nehu, it's uh, those issues were there. Well, we were well. We applied, so I did not go for entrance exam. But in NU, I was in waiting list, and that did not stop me. I took admission in uh, Fai University for my master's program in political science. Then uh, a week later, I got a call from this uh, NU political science department uh, saying that. Uh, Seat is available. Are you? Uh, will you join? Yeah, I soon. Uh, I said yes. I just left, and then next day I took a taxi to Sumo, and the other day I reached, and that was uh, my clear vision that I wanted to go for higher education. There was no stopping me, but uh, like uh, I, I would, I would say that uh, for many people and those who have recently graduated, and those people who always come in this crossroad thinking we have a lesser percentage or, or I don't know, I'm uh, pretty more helpless. Where, where should I go and what should I do? I think I, what, not I think, my suggestion would be, my advice would be that apply wherever uh, you want to. And even if you don't get there also, there are uh, universities here in uh, our college, which will give you uh, PG programs in, some subjects which you pursue, uh, which you want, uh, which is available for you. So no matter what, go for higher education. That is what uh, I advise. And and if there are people who uh, want to stop and do uh, not go for higher education, then definitely since you are already a graduate and you have a degree, definitely you will be lending up in one or the other way, getting a job. No doubt, there is no doubt. So no need to worry about uh, your future career. It's just that you have to start with it. You have to begin somewhere and you can end up in one tomorrow or next year, you can be doing something what you like. On Later you can find the purpose or where you were actually fitting in or maybe you were uh, always born to be there for uh, the job. So uh, even if you don't go for higher education, you should just start with uh, any job, seeking out, uh, uh, seeking, uh, going for interviews and uh, uh, those uh, things where you can fit yourself in and try yourself and uh, explore yourself. You'll be surprised to know that you are capable of uh, many things. And even if you are uh, doubting yourself, you will eventually learn that uh, you are and you can do things. And that is the good thing that we all learn. Uh, that is what I would uh, uh, give uh, my advice to those people who ever come to this crossroad. But people who are very clear with their idea of going for higher education and others, please go for that. Please go. That is what I would say. Uh, as we all know that the present pandemic has affected everyone in every field. So this question is for Albert. Uh, as an entrepreneur, how has the pandemic affected you? <clears throat> Thank you for the question. Yeah, <clears throat> pandemic has really affected us. But when we look back to the other side, for me, it was not affecting. It. In, indeed, it really helped me at the same time. It was my helping. I mean, through this pandemic, I've learned so many things. At the same time, yeah, our academy was closed, but inside we were working a lot. And I should say that 
through this pandemic, I've achieved one goal. That is, uh, after 10 years, I was planning to open up this Amar Clefnot Music Academy as a Bachelor of Music courses in Anakalen to set up as a college. And I've already got through the approval from the Trinity Rock School London. So maybe because of this pandemic, maybe I have some plan at the same time. Actually, I was planning to work this after some few years back, but through this pandemic, I have no work. I didn't go to the office. I didn't go to the academy. I was just sitting at home. From there, I just came my plan that I need to do something through this lockdown. So I started thinking up and I've got up, I have mailed it to the Trinity Rock School London and I was talking to the NPS support as well. And now by the grace of God, they have approved me, but within the 10 years that I need to do something, some rules and regulations they have sent me. So I need to start working on that. That's also. So through this pandemic for me, yeah, of course, some financially it's really affect us. Our students were locked down. They didn't come for the training also. Our staff, they are in the different places. Some maybe april may june i was fully stopped and i didn't do anything I, my income was also zero for three months but from the july we started online classes and now we came a little bit to the normal so, but with that three months i should thank god i should thank this pandemic that i've achieved my big dream i, I should uh to take up as a new responsibility thank you this question is for my and Masevel. as an educator what key bits of advice can you give to the students on how to cope up with their studies and how to keep themselves motivated during these difficult times? As an educator, as a teacher, I would say that the students' community uh, has uh, has uh, been wasted a lot. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean to say that uh, we have all lost everybody in this whole world, this entire country, and our state. Every Nagas have lost and have been affected, we can say emotionally, financially, mentally, or psychologically, in every field we have been affected. But uh, I want to emphasize more on students who were more affected and impacted. I want to say that because um, students community and the students, the Generation Z who are still studying, they are unable to realize and see the bigger picture that it is them who is going to suffer the worst. Um, we are there, we are working, we get salary, we get paid or not. We are already in that field where we can land up in somewhere and there are things possible for us and we are all working. The farmers are again back in the fields, the teachers, the workers, the government officials, the authorities, the everybody is uh, doing the job again, doing the duties, responsibilities, performing. But the students' community are still unable to wake up and the schools, uh, institutes are still yet to fully function and open up, resume classes normally like we used to do, the traditional manner of teaching, lecturing and uh, students in the full world. We have realized that hundreds and hundreds of years ago, lecture method was uh, very traditional and but, but today we have realized that uh, technology may be very vast and it has reached out and can connect and there are so many things but even in the advanced countries there were limitations you could see there were uh, inconveniences with this technology with the advancement yes no doubt we were limited with it we couldn't do much with these uh, online classes and what i want to say is that uh, my point is that the students community future and whatever they are supposed to learn the whole year the whole syllabus of a book which they were to be introduced properly and taught properly, they had not, they had not learned anything. Getting notes, uh, getting video explanation, getting uh, uh, audio explanation, it's limited. And it's not uh, even that beneficial at the end. And they have not been able to year, uh, learn uh, this whole year and they, have, they are going to be promoted or they are going to this next standard, next level and they are going to lose. And I, what I worry is for the college students also, because they are going to face uh, difficulties. Uh, for uh, my classic example would be this uh, recent exam conducted, uh, this uh, NEED exam. Now, Nagaland, out of these 28 states and uh, eight union territories, Nagaland was the worst performing state with just 40 point something percent, with just uh, 736 uh, candidates passing out of this 2000 plus. We are 
we are the worst performing state when it, when it comes to this uh, need exam of class 12 students aspiring to be uh, doctors in dentals or BDS or nursing or whichever field we're talking about the toughest exam in the world JEE engineering for the our Nagas again we performed very bad of course we're not the least in this regard but we, we perform very bad and while we were uh, uh, performing in this bad other states were performing very very good uh, for instance the state of Odisha the state of Maharashtra, uh, the state of uh, Delhi, uh, male candidate got the full, full mark, 720 out of 720. In this time of pandemic, this is an historic uh, achievement for uh, him and uh, during this time of uh, pandemic. So there are instances where people are uh, performing outshining and flying colors while we are going down. That is what I feel uh, our Nagas, uh, especially the student community are unable to realize and see. And that is what we need to motivate and encourage and uh, uh, need to uh, push the students. That is what I feel. In the, how, nothing much can be done now. We cannot uh, take the syllabus and finish and wrap up and whatnot. But I want to do is that uh, motivate and encourage my students. And that is what I'm doing now. Most of my classes, I keep on motivating and encouraging them because uh, the textbook which I'm going to teach is not going to be very uh, helpful now because uh, I need to bring them back. They were sleeping as, uh, they, as long as they want to play games, they want to. And doing what or not activities at home, but they have ignored the books and the education and the future is not going to ignore them. If they keep on ignoring the books now and do, uh, they are unable to wake up from this uh, pandemic uh, comfort zone, then I fear that they are going to be uh, the, uh, the worst uh, present generation, the worst uh, students community whom we will be seeing in not only 2020, but this will go until 2021. It always take a transition. Uh, so I believe that I, the most, the least we can do is now to encourage and motivate and wake our students' community. That is what I feel. Um, as the Soko College is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, what message would you like to convey to the college? Uh, a big congratulations to our college. Uh, performing the second best in the state in UG program, getting three gold medalists on top of the list. And there are other students who got a good percentage and they are uh, outshining the other colleges. And I'm so happy that our college is uh, uh, giving pro uh, programs of uh, BCA, they are introducing BBA, they are introducing master's program, which are a very applauding and uh, and a big achievement, which I'm very, very happy for our college. And I believe our college has that potential still carrying that same standard and going to the next level, achieving and getting the certificate and achieving something bigger. That is what that so is always for. And of course, that so is uh, what top anything that tops it. And that is what our college is doing it, uh, doing this, uh, uh, time of pandemic, we are unable to have this uh, uh, jubilee, silver jubilee. Our college is very young and it has uh, reached its uh, jubilee. And finally, we are going to do poetry. I would like to say that I'm very much grateful to Tetsu College and this big celebration, which which could be could have been more fun and exciting. But uh, I would say that uh, it has been this beautiful journey for this uh, Tetsu family. Of course, for the uh, uh, teachers and uh, authorities and the proprietors and the founders of this family, uh, that's our family, that I'm very much blessed to be part of it. So I would like to say that thank you so much, Tetsu, and a very, very big and massive respect and appreciation and appeal to the and would be giving out a message uh, soon for our Jubilee also. Uh, that is what I wanted to say. I'm very much uh, happy and congratulations for the success of these 25 years and going to the six. I'm very much happy. Thank you. First of all, I will say a big thank you to our college for celebrating us 25 years. 
Our college motto says strive for excellence. And not only the motto, but we are applying in a practical life that every year we produce the gold medalists. This year also we produce three. It's an outstanding performance. We are really thankful. At the same time, we are really proud to be a Texas uh, family. And our college is not only based on the like teaching only education sector, like only not theory, but Practically as well, our college is an outstanding. Not only the both practically and the uh, theory, we are doing best. At the same time, our infrastructure, we are the top. We are so proud of it. At the same time, uh, for the education sector, it, academic sector also, we are doing best, and we are expecting much better in days to come as well. And um, thank you so much. At the lastly, I would like to encourage to our brother and sister to us are here today. Uh, I would like to say like. First of all, we need to believe in ourselves. At the same time, we should take every opportunity as a challenge in order to compete this competitive world. That's like uh, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope you're able to hear me clearly. I'm having some network issues today. Uh, but it's so great to see our panelists today. Okay, Masheville and Albert uh, speak so confidently. Uh, it's so great to hear from you and uh, to interact with you guys. Uh, and it makes me feel very proud because I have taught both of you. At the same time, it also makes me feel very old because <laughs> I can see how much you guys have grown and 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 you know, matured over the years. And it's such a wonderful, wonderful testament uh, to how our students are doing well. Uh, what I'd like to ask you is this. Uh, how much of what you had studied in your classes, in your courses, has actually helped you in your professional field? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you so much for you have been a teacher and I have learned a lot from you and Miss Abu. I, uh, I always remember Miss Abu and you, how you were and then how jolly and you were so interactive, uh, friendly, and then we were so comfortable with you. I, I still remember we uh, taking classes of this uh, English proficiency class after cla uh, after our uh, cl uh, college classes and then uh, enjoying a lot and you helping us to prepare for us for the future and uh, learning so many uh, English words uh, which I'm still very terrible and uh, still learning a lot uh, but uh, thank you so much sir and uh, those which you have uh, the Tetsu family has given us the teachers has uh, taught us it came into life. Uh, those were our living testament, like you said. Uh, I mean, uh, those uh, things which you can see on us, and we are able to execute those things because we eventually did not know anything. We learned from you, from our teachers, and they have given us that knowledge, and we are able to comprehend and make a bigger. Uh, I mean, with that, we can. Uh, we have been able to use it uh, in a platform where we are today. So I'm very much thankful I learned from you and that all those things which are in me is part of you guys which have shared a blessing. The, those things have been uh, wonderful things. Uh, uh, those, those wonderful things have been part of our life now. So I'm very much grateful to you, sir. And yes, I would like to say in this platform that I'm very much grateful to all the teachers, whoever has taught me still. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Okay, let me also take this time. Uh, thank you so much, Sir Anjan. Good to see you. <laughs> you will be teaching us from the first semester till third semester, I guess, right, sir? Uh, the one we take the practically at the same time, what you have taught subject. Actually, I was working in the bank also, ICICI bank for the months of three months. Uh, I got the opportunity to work here, but because of my workload in the academy, I just left the job. And when I worked in the bank, I've learned that Whatever we take in the classes, uh, subject related to the uh, banking, it was really practically I faced the problem how the banking people deal with the people. It was so rude. But when I go and uh, when I started working in the bank, the one you teach and the practically I have worked it, it was uh, it brings back and I reflect back in my life that I had and as soon as I start working in the bank, I remember your subject. I remember how you have taught us and secondly i would also like to thank you sir like you have taught us in english not only the theory but you have making us group division and making us a video competition uh, competition and that's uh, we have starting our uh, 
that's where we started to make our own video editing with our own professionally. So that video editing, it really helped me till now in our, uh, I mean, in academia as well, because these days we are dealing with the video editing, with just sending to the student for recordings. And also that's are the things that we have uh, learned from what you have taught us. Thank you. Okay, uh, before we proceed uh, for further questions, uh, since our third panelist, Malavino, she is unable to uh, connect back, so she has sent a message which she would like to convey uh, to Tetsu. Uh, she wrote like this uh, to the dear principal, teaching staff, and students. It is ultimately the seriousness, the devotion, and the discipline with which you approach your learning that will shape your future. Wishing all a success and a great future ahead. Hearty uh, congratulations, my best wishes and greetings to the college on celebrating the Silver Jubilee. So that was the message uh, sent by Malavino. So if there's anyone else who uh, wants to convey the message uh, from the participants, you can take your time now. So to end up our session, I would like to give time to Sir Mirang for the vote of thanks. Okay, thank you, Ani, for the time. Uh, it was indeed a very refreshing and uh, wonderful experience to uh, attend the session. And uh, as we all know, this was a collaboration between the Department of History, Tetsu College, and the Tetsu Alumni Network. So it would be incomplete uh, to end the session without acknowledging those individuals who have made this session memorable and a successful one. So in the outset, I would like to uh, thank the three panelists uh, for your valuable time and for uh, uh, coming here and then sharing your experience and then uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, imparting uh, all the experience that you have gained throughout the years to all of us. So we are so thankful to all of you. And at the same time, uh, I would also like to thank uh, our brother David uh, for attending the session as well and then sharing your experience to all of us. And at the same time, uh, I would like to thank uh, our assistant team and all the teachers for, uh, in spite of your busy schedules, you have come here and then you attended the session. So we are so grateful to all of you for uh, your time. And at the same time, uh, I would also like to thank uh, the Department of History uh, particularly uh, the Ichuti uh, Mem Tatung and the participants mm -hmm. from the uh, department for uh, you know uh, uh, coming up with this uh, wonderful uh, session where we can meet the alumni and learn from them. So thank you for uh, coming up with this uh, amazing uh, session where all of us have learned something. So uh, last but not the least, I'd also like to thank all the participants like who have attended the session and uh, without which uh, this session would not have been successful. So I hope and believe that all of us have learned uh, something new from this session. I know uh, since uh, this is first of its kind, and especially uh, since we are doing it online, I know we might not be comfortable and there might be some uh, technical problems here and there, but at the end of the day, I think all of us here, we have learned and experienced something new uh, through this session. So uh, once again, I would like to thank everyone for uh, coming here and attending the session. And uh, I hope and believe that even in the coming days, uh, we will be able to uh, organize this kind of session and have this kind of interaction. So once again, thank you all very much and then uh, have a lovely weekend. Thank you so much.